Yo, what up guys? It's ZStride13 here, and just a few hours ago, the Destiny 2 Warmind DLC live stream was just released. Uh, I was in work, so couldn't uh, couldn't get the actual uh, stream while it was going, but I watched a video afterwards of the um, the entire reveal, and just to save you guys some time and effort, because it's like Altogether, it's probably an hour-long reveal um, with a lot of kind of fluff in between. Um, I'm going to break it down for you guys and just give you a highlight reel of all the major points of what to look forward to and what's to come in the second expansion of Destiny 2 Warmind. So, we're going to be set up on Mars. Now, for you Destiny 1 players, we've already been to Mars. However, this is an entirely new area called Hella's Basin, and it's the polar ice cap region of Mars. So although we've been to Mars, it's not going to be like anything we've ever seen before. Now the point of the story, at least as far as we got from the reveal, is that Rasputin awakens. Now Mars is actually the birthplace of Rasputin, and they're going to tell us how Rasputin can exist both in Earth and in Mars at the same time, so I, I don't know how that's going to work yet. But they're going to, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they're going to explain it to us. Uh, but he awakens, and this is going to cause galactic-wide events. So, war sats are just coming down everywhere. He's causing a huge ripple with his awakening. And it's also causing the polar ice caps to melt. Which is going to uncover a time capsule, whatever that means. So, we're going to actually be introduced to Anna Bray. She's the main character of this DLC, whereas Osiris, in Curse of Osiris, was their, their main character. Um, we've got Anna Bray, and if you guys have gone into the hangar room in the tower, um, you'll notice that there's a hidden journal that's redacted, and it mentions Anna Bray. Now, this is the Anna Bray that that journal was referring to. So, we're going to find Anna Bray. This is the birthplace of Rasputin. And we get to meet uh, Clovis Bray, who is going to be the corporation that was on Mars, and that's responsible for creating Rasputin in the first place. So that's, that's the plot. Now, Frozen Hive. That's the new enemy. Uh, since this DLC expansion, it's not a major expansion like is uh, what's coming in September, we couldn't expect too much. So they gave us Frozen Hive. What's the difference between Frozen Hive and regular Hive? I I don't know. I don't know if they have special abilities, or if they have more health, or who knows. But that's Frozen Hive, so that, that's what we get. Um, speaking of new enemies, we also have a new public event-ish thing. So it's not quite a public event because it works a little bit differently. It's called Escalation Protocol. Now you can say that this is pretty much Destiny's answer to the lack of a firefight mode or a horde mode. Um, if you played Halo ODST, Halo 5, uh, firefight, very similar to that. So it's going to be waves of enemies that increase in difficulty as you go. Now, why I say it's public event-ish is because it can be run more or less 24-7, which means when a public event starts, yes, you can join it, but there's going to be some ending point, and then there's going to be a timer cooldown. Uh, with this, it's more or less going to be you can hop in whenever, and then keep running it for as long as you want. So, there's seven total waves. And as I said, with each wave, the enemies are going to get harder and harder. So on the first wave, you kill some enemies, and then there's going to be a boss. Say like, uh, Yellow Health Cyclops. You go to wave three, and there's going to be a reward chest for everyone that's doing the event currently. You get to wave five, there's going to be another reward chest. And now, uh, mind you, this is going to have special, unique legendary weapons. So there's a shotgun, there's a sniper, and I believe they said there's a sword that's going to have unique perks on it that you cannot find on any other weapon. Um, I know for a fact that the shotgun has, if you melee, a couple seconds after the melee, the shotgun damage is going to be increased a ton, like a ridiculous amount. And the sniper is going to have, the longer you aim in, 
there's going to be a damage boost by the time you shoot it. So you can hit some ridiculously high numbers. And they say at the end of Wave 7, so you've gone through the whole thing, you fought six regular bosses, you are going to fight a unique boss. Unique to this event. But there's going to be a total of five unique bosses that rotate on a weekly basis. So if you fight, say, like a big old Cyclops unique boss the first week, next week is going to be a completely separate seventh wave unique boss. And these are going to drop, like I said, unique rewards. There's going to be unique armor. And there's also going to be this interesting thing. It's not just from this event, but they're called armory codes, which unlock special weapons that can help you complete escalation protocol, which um, one of them that they just leaked was a, a Valkyrie, which apparently is a rocket launcher that just obliterates enemies. So if, I guess if you're having trouble against a boss or a unique boss in escalation protocol, you turn in one of those armory codes, you grab a Valkyrie, and then bam. And if a couple people grab a Valkyrie, then you guys probably just mopped up the entire floor. For Crucible updates, there is going to be Valor Rank and Glory Rank. Now Valor Rank is going to just be pretty much how much time have you put in. So it goes up when you win, but it doesn't go down when you lose. So there's no loss penalties. However, glory rank and this can only be accessed in the competitive playlist is going to be a competition rank solely based on your win to loss ratio so when you win it goes up when you lose it goes down <laughs> okay and this get this part so there's going to be streak bonuses so if you're on a win streak you're going to get more and more points up to a cap that what that cap is i don't know there's also going to be a loss streak so anyone who gets tilted easily, you might want to be very careful of your glory rank because as you're on a loss streak, you're going to lose more and more points down to a cap. Not sure what that cap is, or minimum I should say. Um, they did introduce new crucible weapons, so that's nice. I mean, we could have hoped for that. But there's also going to be a season crucible weapon, which is kind of like the weapon to shoot for. So you're going to have to hit Fabled Glory Rank, which I'm assuming is going to be the highest rank you can get, or at least up there in the ranks you can get. And they said that it's going to be a fairly hard rank to achieve, which means people who are really good at Trials, those are the kinds of guys that are going to be getting this, uh, this Fabled Weapon. And it's going to be a Pulse Rifle, and <laughs> this Pulse Rifle is ridiculous. It has its own unique perk on it, which pretty much says when you reload faster because of Outlaw, it increases its rate of fire. Which means you're still doing all of the damage, you're just doing it faster. So if you can hit that Fable Glory rank, you are going to get a sweet PvP weapon. They've also introduced private matches, which is nice. All those D1 players remember private matches, messing around with your friends. This is finally a feature that's back in the game. And they made it so that there's new DLC maps. But, and this is this is interesting, I, I don't know if I completely agree with what they're doing, but, I mean, it's, it's what they're doing, so we gotta take it. Uh, private matches require DLC ownership. So some of the new maps, like Meltdown or Solitude, they require you to own the DLC to play them in private matches. However, if you play normal Crucible, not private matches, you can play on the DLC maps without actually owning the DLC. So if you're only playing Destiny because of Crucible, you can pretty much not buy the DLC and still get <laughs> to play on the new maps. So interesting uh, twist they put on that. Haven't seen any other games really do that, but hey, maybe that's uh, one of the criticisms they received, I'm not sure. Uh, another big thing and probably the last thing of this reveal were exotic weapon changes. They showed it more or less in the Crucible playlist, but they're also going to apply to PvE, so not everyone has to play Crucible to get these um, exotic weapon changes. But there's only a handful that, that, that did not receive changes, but the main ones were Fighting Lion, Graviton Lance, Risk Runner, Skyburner's Oath, Hard Light, Crimson, Sturm and Drang, and a few others that they've said but they didn't really go into detail so for the fighting lion they more or less 
<laughs> they made it better because, I mean, the fighting lion was garbage. But they made it so that the detonation range increased, but the impact from hitting a person directly decreased. So they made it slightly forgiving, and they made it drop a special ammo crate, or an energy ammo crate, whenever you kill someone with the grenade. So, uh, I mean, take it for what it is. I, I'm not a fan of the fighting lion, but they're at least trying to make it more viable. You've got the Graviton Lance, which they changed from a 3 burst to a 2 burst, and increased the damage of that second bullet. So they're trying to increase the time to kill and make Graviton Lance more competitive with other pulse rifles in PvP. So they said it's going to give Vigilance Wing a run for its money. Risk Runner had a pretty interesting change. So before it reduced arc damage when you were getting hit, by arc, and then let you dish out more damage. Now it's still going to have that perk, but it's going to be possible in PvP to reduce it even more when it's in your hands. And then in PvE, if you have it stowed, it's still going to apply that buff to you. So you take even less reduced arc damage and dish more out without even having to have the weapon out. Skyburner's Oath? made it so that bullets track. And yes, I mean trace people when you shoot it. So you could hip fire the Skyburner's Oath now. And it has explosive bullets now too. And you can hip fire away and these bullets will curve to hit your opponent. It looks pretty OP. It still has a slow fire rate, but with explosive bullets and tracking bullets, it's going to be pretty annoying to fight against, especially if it's a warlock that's using it. Hard Light didn't get changed too much, however the changes improved the quality of life for this weapon a ton. Now the Borealis weapon that's in PlayStation 4, it's the sniper that has the same perk as Hard Light, you can change the element. You can do that by just holding down reload. They added that to Hard Light, thank god. So finally, Hard Light can get the same benefit that Borealis does. You can hold the reload button and it instantly changes to what element you want. They also added double damage to its bouncing bullets. So Hard Light can ricochet bullets off of walls, floors, ceilings, any surface, the bullets will ricochet up. If the bullets ricochet and hit someone, their damage is doubled. So, <laughs> if you're grouping up around a corner, you're going to get melted. And they also said that if you shoot the ground in front of someone, the bullets bouncing up will do double damage. So you might be better off shooting the bullets into the ground and having them hit your enemy instead of actually just shooting at them normally. The Crimson, they made it so that the first bullet is the bullet that does the most damage, so that it's more forgiving and is more competitive to other hand cannons. So not a big change again, but they wanted to see the Crimson see more action, which is why they're trying to make it compete to like better devils. Uh, last one I'm gonna cover today, and the last of this DLC reveal, is Sturm and Drang. Now Sturm is the hand cannon, Drang is the um, sidearm. So they pretty much just increase their synergy with each other. The more kills you get with the Drang, it increases the Sturm's magazine capacity, and then you can just pretty much switch back and forth. How it was meant to be played, you were meant to have both of them equipped at the same time, and they would benefit each other. They really just made it so that those synergistic elements are better. Because before, yeah sure, Sturm's pretty good, but the Drang was awful, so there's no way you're going to run the Sturm and the Drang, you're going to run something else. Now they made it so if you're using the Sturm, you're going to get huge benefits from the Drang. Alright, thanks for listening guys. Uh, I'm excited for this DLC. I haven't played Destiny 2 in a few months now since Curse of Osiris came out, and I've been really itching to get back into this game, and it finally looks like they're giving players a reason to get back into it. So I'm going to get the DLC right when it comes out, going to have a video on what I think of that, some of my first impressions, and hopefully I'll see you guys on Destiny 2 Warmind.
Peace.